Hello everyone and welcome back to Mossy Bottom. It's now late May and we've had glorious weather the last few days. Um, it's a bit overcast right now, hopefully the sun will come out again later, but it's still very, very mild, uh, about 22 degrees last time I checked. And for late May in the west of Ireland, that's pretty damn warm. It almost constitutes a heat wave. Uh, May for me here at Mossy Bottom means baby animals. We've got chicks, we've got ducklings, and of course, We've got these little lovelies, um, baby rabbits. Why am I showing you a baby rabbit? Well, this video is all about my latest creation, uh, which you can see behind me, and it probably just looks like a fence with a few rabbit heads popping up out of the long grass, but it's the part you can't see which I'm most proud of, because under the ground, there are four large tunnels connecting to two nest boxes, uh, buried about 20, 25 centimeters deep with a layer of soil and turf over the top. What I've tried to create is an artificial rabbit warren, which I hope to the rabbits living in it very closely simulates how they would live in the wild. And this, I think, is a really great way to keep rabbits. And you might be surprised at just how easy it is to make too, providing that is uh, you don't mind doing a bit of digging. Well, actually quite a lot of digging. <laughs> Could have done with your help. But before I show you exactly what's under the ground in that rabbit warren and just how I made it, which I'm gonna do, I've got loads of nice photos of the build. I first want to tackle a few rabbit related questions, which I know you guys are gonna be asking me in the comments. So I might as well have a go at answering them now. First of all, why do I keep rabbits at all? So the main reason that I keep rabbits is to act as organic lawnmowers. It's all part of that self-sufficient system. I now have four rabbit tractors, like the ones you can see behind me. Uh, one of which I actually built from uh, start to finish in a video um, last October. So if you're interested in making your own, have a look at that. And they're basically outdoor enclosures with an indoor nesting area, uh, which get moved onto fresh grass every single day. Um, with the aid of handles, as you can see, and wheels at the other end, which make it very easy to do. And in return for the fresh grass, the rabbits give me back one of the richest manures in the animal kingdom. It's high in nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and a whole host of micronutrients. In fact, it has four times the nutrient value of cow or horse manure and twice that of chicken manure. People really underestimate rabbit poop. It's amazing stuff. And also, unlike other types of animal manure, uh, rabbit poop doesn't need to be composted before it's put out on the garden. So you can use it directly as a fertilizer and it won't burn plant roots. Anyone who knows anything about gardening and horticulture will know it's dangerous to the plant to add um, manure directly around the roots because it can cause them to become burnt and it will damage the plant or tree. That doesn't apply to rabbit poop. So you can move them up and down directly on the land. And you can see that's exactly what I do. I have rows of grass between my vegetable areas and I just move the tractors up and down, allowing the rabbits to eat the grass and deposit the poop. Um, of course, the poop's not going directly into the vegetable area, but the nutrient value does seep out into those areas. And believe me, I've been doing it for several years now. It absolutely works. I don't really need to add additional manure or compost to the soil here because the rabbits do all that work for me. It's amazing. So that explains why I keep rabbits. But the next question you're probably thinking is why do I breed them? Well, to be honest, mainly for the joy of seeing baby rabbits hopping about every spring. Of course, I separate males and females and I only ever breed as many young as I know I can either sell or support myself uh, here on my little piece of land. Rabbits make very popular pets, and over the last few years, um, I've sold 25 to 30. Uh, I've lost count of the exact number, but those of you who have um, visited me here at Mossy Bottom and gone home with a baby rabbit or two will, um, I hope, attest to what wonderful pets they make, especially this particular breed, the New Zealand White. So, if the rabbit tractors are so good, why did I make a rabbit warren? Well, I think, as some of you rightly pointed out, um, rabbits do appreciate a large space to run and jump in. 
and the enclosed area where the rabbit warren is is three meters by eight meters um, so at 24 square meters which is about 250 square feet you know that's pretty large certainly as rabbit enclosures go um, now the plan isn't for them to live here year round what I'm going to do is rotate them between the tractors uh, and the rabbit warren throughout the year so that they get to experience both I want them to fertilize my vegetable crops because every animal here at Mossy Bottom has a job but I also want them to have a great life and experience uh, sleeping below ground, darting in and out of tunnels, just like their wild ancestors would. There's another important reason, I think, to rotate the rabbits in and out of this area, and that's to allow the grass to recover. You can see, I think, by comparing this area where the rabbits were for about six weeks to the area on the other side of the fence, uh, where they've only been for one week, just how good rabbits are as organic lawn mowers. Not only is the grass eaten down here, um, but this area is absolutely covered in poop. There are still brown areas where the grass hasn't even begun to push through yet. If I kept them in here year round, and that's only with three rabbits, the grass really would disappear and they'd be running around on mud, especially in the winter. And I personally believe that as well as hopping about, one of the great joys that rabbits experience in life is foraging for fresh grass. Every time I move one of the rabbit tractors onto a new patch, I can see their excitement. In fact, that's often what triggers them to start hopping about. It just isn't the same, I'm afraid, when you're throwing in dry hay. Okay, so if you're interested in building a rabbit warren, or just insatiably curious, as I know many of you are, here's how I made it. First, I chose an area of ground which doesn't get flooded, and that's really important. This is the peak of a hill, and even after a month's rain uh, in the dead of winter, this area is still relatively dry, and I know that because I checked it in the winter in anticipation of building this. I dug a hole a couple of feet down to make sure that it doesn't get any uh, flooding. Any standing water up here just drains down this hill too quickly for the warren to flood. And obviously, if you're keeping rabbits underground, that's absolutely critical because the last thing you want is for your baby rabbits to have to make a Titanic-esque escape in the middle of winter. I then bought two large rigid plastic boxes with lids. They must have lids. Um, each was 148 litres in volume, so quite big. And I just got these from my local garden centre. I think they were 18 euro each. I suspect they'd be a lot cheaper anywhere that isn't Ireland. And then came the tiring part, of course. I had to dig a hole large enough to bury each box with an additional 20 centimeters um, over the top of the lid in order to um, bury soil back in and add turf to the top. And that process did involve hauling out a few large rocks and pickaxing my way through a seam of clay in the case of one of the holes. But as is usually the case here at Mossy Bottom, I got there in the end. If you want to make that process a lot easier, you could always um, hire or borrow a little excavator, a mini digger for a day. And then I took some old yellow drainage pipe, which my neighbor was throwing away, luckily for me, and I cut it into four sections, which I just inserted into the plastic boxes through circular holes that I cut. And if you don't happen to have a neighbor giving away yellow drainage pipe or any other type of drainage pipe big enough for rabbits to fit through, then fear not because you can buy this stuff um, in builders merchants. It is of course designed to carry water away from flooded areas, which is why it has the perforations, little holes all the way through it. Um, so just make sure, as I mentioned earlier, that you're building your rabbit warren in an area that doesn't flood. Otherwise, that piping is liable to carry rainwater or groundwater all the way into your nest box. Next, I filled the nest boxes with lots of straw. I really packed it in, knowing that they'd pull some of it out, making their sleeping areas. And rabbits are quite clean animals. Um, in a warren like this, they'll always come out of the tunnel to conduct their business, which is why there's so much poop just outside the entrances. So I reckon I won't need to clean the boxes uh, more than twice a year. Um, and of course, that's a fairly big job. I'm going to have to cut the turf, roll it up, um, open the lid of the box and replace the straw, clean it, and then roll it back. It might take an hour per box, 
but if it's twice a year, it's really not that bad. And then after all that digging, you get the much more enjoyable job of burying everything again. And when I did this, I put lots of stones around the box and the pipes to try and discourage other unwanted rodents like mice and potentially rats from making use of the space. And also, of course, to provide some thermal mass, because the more stones, the more the heat from the sun will be absorbed and the warmer that space will be at night. Next was the very fun job of making the stone entrance to each tunnel. And one thing I've never been short of here at Mossy Bottom is stones, most of which I've actually dug out of the ground over the years uh, when creating my vegetable plots. Ireland is notorious for being a very stony country, um, and I've got big stones, small stones, round stones, flat stones, you name it. I've got piles everywhere. <laughs> so it's always really satisfying when I get to use that stone to make stuff. Um, like the foundations of my cabin, or dry stone walls, which I've built a few of too. Or indeed, rabbit porches. And the idea was to make something that looked fairly natural, um, as if the stone had always been there. So I pinned down a small piece of weedproof membrane um, under each entrance, just to prevent them getting too muddy, especially in the winter, when the rabbits are darting in and out. And then it was just a case of building up the stones around the top of the pipe um, and wedging in mud and soil to make sure it was nice and secure. And of course, the other important function of these little structures is to stop rain running directly into the pipes. If the groundwater can't rise into your tunnel from below because you're on high ground and the rainwater can't fall into it from above, you should hopefully have dry and very happy rabbits. And next was the most transformative part of the process, covering the bare soil with turf or grass. And I know most of you, if faced with this task, would, uh, I'm sure, just visit your local garden center and buy rolls of turf. That's certainly what they do on these uh, TV garden transformation shows. But I always like to do things the self-sufficient way as much as I can. So I actually dug up the turf from another part of my um, garden and I transferred it here uh, one chunk at a time in a wheelbarrow. And it sounds nightmarish, but it was actually quite fun and made me sort of feel like I was um, creating a little hobbit hole hidden in the landscape. Though I do have to admit, it took a while to fill the entire 24 square meters. So that was the warren more or less complete, but what I then decided to do was dig a trench around the perimeter in order to bury a wire mesh fence um, about 30 centimeters or one foot deep. And the purpose of the fence wasn't really to stop predators getting in because if a fox or a mink wanted to get in, uh, they could easily just climb over the fence. It's not about that. Although I must say I am lucky in that mink don't seem to be in the area. I know they're a real problem for other small holders in Ireland, but I seem to um, be very lucky in that regard. I've never seen one in the time that I've been here. Foxes, while definitely present, are kept away um, day and night by moss, my border collie. So the purpose of burying the fence is simply to stop the rabbits digging out. And they do like to dig, especially along the edge of enclosures. So for peace of mind, I thought it was worth doing. Rabbits, incidentally, don't seem to have a homing instinct in the way that chickens, ducks, pigs all have. If my chickens escape, uh, which they do occasionally, um, the fence isn't that high, they'll never wander far from their coop or from the other chickens. The ducks, which half the year um, are free range, wandering about finding slugs, will always wander back to their duck house uh, when it gets dark at the end of the day. And the pigs will actively look for people when they escape, uh, like when the electric fence around their enclosure goes down for whatever reason, they often come to the door of the caravan and start oinking looking for food. Rabbits though unfortunately seem to be different um, and there are quite a few videos on YouTube of homesteaders uh, trying to free range them and ultimately losing their rabbits. Just doesn't seem to work unfortunately. Maybe it would um, if they had warrens like this because maybe the rabbits need a warren to have that strong sense of home. Um, I don't think I'll be testing it out though. Having dug the trench, I then hammered in fence posts along the perimeter uh, and connected the wire mesh. 
And this isn't chicken wire, it's the higher grade 2mm galvanised mesh, which costs a little bit more, but is much stronger and longer lasting. I definitely recommend it. And the reason I divided this area into two uh, is simply to separate the boys from the girls. Rabbits can actually reproduce from 12 weeks old, uh, so if you keep more than one, be sure to learn how to sex them um, so that you can keep the genders separated. It's something I learned a long time ago and uh, you need to be quite good at it if you intend to breed rabbits. The mating process is astonishingly quick. Blink and you will literally miss it. Um, and does are permanently in season, so it doesn't take much to get a rabbit pregnant. The only thing left to do after that was backfill the trench with soil and add a few supporting stones to this end um, where the ground slopes quite sharply away. Um, I will at some point make an entrance gate or a stile for human access. At the moment I just use my stepladder. I haven't quite decided how to do it yet. It's, it's definitely going to happen though, it's on the drawing board. And I also plan to make a little rainwater collector um, so they have uh, permanent access to fresh drinking water and so that I don't have to keep topping up those drinking bottles. So finally, what are my thoughts on the rabbit warren? Has it been a success? Well, the rabbits clearly love the underground tunnels and nest boxes. They sleep in there every night and they spend hours there during the day when the weather's not great, which it often isn't. The biggest advantage, I would say, with a warren rather than um, above ground hutches has to do with temperature moderation. In the summer, when it's hot outside, and it does occasionally get hot here in the west of Ireland, the nest box remains relatively cool. And conversely, of course, in the winter, when it could be freezing outside, the nest box is fairly warm. And that's because the soil and the stones act as thermal mass, releasing heat absorbed during the day. And of course, there's no wind chill down there either. I have to say, uh, living in a hole underground makes a whole lot of sense, no pun intended. Um, when you think about it, I actually kind of wish I could make a giant version of this warren for myself. The major disadvantage, as I've touched on earlier, is the limited supply of fresh grass. For me, this has to be part of a rotation system. But if your entire garden is fenced in and rabbit proofed, then you could build a warren without the fencing and let your rabbits just roam free in your garden. I bet they'd prefer it over an above ground hutch, that's for sure. Okay folks, that's just about it for this video. I am being assaulted by a million airborne midges right now. They're everywhere, up my shorts, under my eyelids, you name it. It's one of the few bad things about living in a place as beautiful as the west of Ireland. In early summer, those midges come out and they are just relentless. I would take bears and wolves any day of the week. I hope, as is always the case uh, when I make these videos, that it might have inspired one or two of you to have a go at making something similar to this yourself. I definitely recommend it. I think your rabbits, if you keep them, will love you for it. And just think of the creativity you could have with a bit more pipe, connecting more boxes together, coming up with something really inventive. The next video is going to be about ways to generate a small income whilst living on a small holding or a homestead, as I do. And I know from reading comments and emails that that's one of the biggest obstacles uh, preventing a lot of people pursuing this kind of dream. Until then, um, thank you so much for all the comments on my polytunnel video. I learned an awful lot from me and from all my critters. Bye for now. It's been glorious weather the last few days. Thank you to my new cockerel there. It's a bit overcast right now. Hopefully the sun will come back out uh, later on. It's a bit overcast right now, but it's still... Well, as you might be able to see in the background, hello everyone and welcome back.